Welcome to the In Real Time Car Talk Show. Coming up, how to prevent your catalytic converter from being stolen from Consumer Reports. Jeff brings you his pre-owned car of the week. Kinda. Cool, cool. The car. Myers Manx. You ever heard of it? Yeah, yeah. You'll want to know about it if you have never heard about it. If you have heard about it, then you know about it. And you'll learn about <laughs> it. It's the holy grail. Uh, we get some Hollywood glamour from L.A.'s own Jack Nerad. Oh, yeah. We'll also have the stories making automotive news headlines this week just ahead in this edition of the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy, along with David mm, Ainsley. Mm, mm, mm. Mr. Mars is out today. Uh, King Conrad DeLong. We need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate that. Let's go right now to Consumer Reports. Benjamin Preston, how to prevent your car's catalytic converter from being stolen and the precious metals that are inside of it. Hey, it's a great article you wrote. Got a chance to read it online at consumerreports.org. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Well, for starters, I don't think you're going to get a catalytic converter stolen out of your Myers Manx. <laughs> no, the, uh, no, the, the, that that won't happen. I wouldn't imagine since, yeah, uh, yeah the uh, it doesn't have one. No, oh, well, <laughs> yes, it, uh, the original one doesn't. Although well, there, there have been conversions with other engines that may or may not have had it. There goes my story. Yeah, but I guess at, at any rate, be sorry. At an electric Myers Max, then you don't have to worry about. Oh, yeah, my but gosh. that that is, just just doesn't have the pizzazz that a gasoline motor does. You but need to hear you that. ever worked on a Volkswagen engine? Oh yeah, yeah. Who yeah. hasn't? Because if you didn't, it wouldn't work, right? Put on ching. There we go. <laughs> There's the rim <laughs> shot. I, I had a couple of those cars. Yeah, not yeah. the Manx, but just the Beetle. Sure. Anyway, um, so for to, to prevent catalytic converter thefts. It's, it's really just the same advice that we give anybody who's uh, trying to avoid A, having their car stolen, or B, having the contents or parts stolen off of their car, you know, because there are a number of parts that are commonly stolen off of cars. Of course, we know wheels and tires. If you've ever looked at Craigslist looking for a set of rims or something, I mean, let's be honest, we don't have statistics, but half that stuff's probably stolen. Oh, I would agree. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, park your car in a well-lit area if you can, highly trafficked and well-lit. If you're street parking, if you're parking in the driveway, if you have uh, motion sensor lights or cameras or anything like that, that can definitely be helpful. Um, if you have to park someplace where there are definitely going to be people cruising around at night, you know, there, there might be other things you can do that'll cost money but um, will cost less than a new catalytic converter. They have these like uh, these cable things that loop around the ends and go across the, the catalytic converter or steel plates, things that make it more difficult, not impossible, but more difficult to steal the catalytic converter. Uh, so a thief will look under there, see that he or she can't cut the thing off in a, in, a, in a quick couple of minutes with an electric sawzall and we'll just move on to something easier because I mean, like you, you were saying earlier, there's not a lot of money in reselling these things. Um, it's just got to come from volume. So they probably want to work really, really quick and just grab as many as possible. That's why uh, fleet owners have had a problem with this. You know, if they're For parking years. a lot. Yeah. yeah, right. Like big trucks and stuff. They have big catalytic converters. And it's really easy to crawl under a truck and, you know, lop off the, the cats and just walk away with a lot full of uh full of converters so what what vehicle lines did you find out were the most popular to steal uh definitely toyota priuses because they have two of them they're very big uh big converters uh pickup trucks huge because they have uh you, most new cars have a, a couple of catalytic converters and uh pickup trucks are easy to crawl under Plain yeah, I, I, I tell anybody I know, especially if they drive a Toyota Tundra, which is one of the more popular ones to steal, park the passenger side as close to the curb as you can, like right on the curb that makes it more difficult to get under. And the guy may just see yours and go, no, nope, don't want to jack with that. I want one I can get off in 10 seconds, not one that's going to take me 30 seconds to get off. So even even something as simple as that can deter the guy that's driving through the neighborhood looking but you know if they are adamant about stealing converters they're going to take all they can right it, yeah it's really like you said it's a deterrent thing anything that you can do to slow them down is going to reduce the likelihood that 
your catalytic converter or wheels or other parts are going to be stolen off your car. Tailgates are another big one. Right. Um, obviously now, you know, tailgates have cameras and other things inside of them. And it's not like you can just, I mean, I've ruined tailgates before where you go to the, you go to the junkyard and you pay 35 bucks for a new one, but now it's like a whole different thing. Those, With all the electronics. Cost hundreds of dollars, if not more to replace. Well, you know, I kind of look at it as, do you remember the, uh, I don't, I don't call it the two hooks <clears throat> kind of deal that you used to go to Walmart or Kmart and buy, it would go back uh, because everybody was breaking into steering column locks oh, yeah. and stealing the vehicle. And it was this deal that you hooked underneath oh, the, the brake, the brake pedal, pedal yeah, yeah. and you put the other part on the steering wheel, clamped them both together, and then undid it. Yeah. And all, it, it took nothing to get those off of there. However, I'll bet you there are thousands and thousands of vehicles that didn't get stolen because it took a couple of extra seconds to undo that. that. Yeah, to circumvent and it. Deterrent. Yeah. And, and I would imagine. Brings up, that brings up another part that can be stolen, which is the airbag. Um, the, the steering wheel mounted airbag can right. be stolen too because, I mean, you were talking about uh, repair shops with stacks of stolen catalytic converters. A repair shop could use stolen airbags to replace the airbags in an insurance job, too. Correct. I'm not saying they would or wouldn't, but I'm sure that those uh, disreputable businessmen are out there. Well, well um, and what we talked about uh, at the end of the last hour was what's out there to help the law do something about these guys when they go in and they've got a stack of 40 airbags or they have a stack of 40 <laughs> clearly saws all cut off catalytic converters because once they reach the repair shop um you they can't prosecute the person who stole it because they're long gone and here in houston they have no you know the police have no Recourse, there's no yeah. action they can take i mean it, it really just varies so widely from state to state um something that might might be easier to do in texas might be more difficult to do here in new york because, you know, we have a long, sordid history of car and parts theft here, and the, the laws have followed that. So it, it's uh, somewhat, it could be somewhat more difficult in other states to, you know, it, it could be a, a big violation to even have anything to do with those parts. So besides uh, the, these, uh, uh, shall we say, shields or uh, preventil- preventive kind of uh, uh, applications that you can put on that section of the exhaust system to prevent a sawzall or at least kind of slow them down. Yeah, yeah. slow them down. What else? I mean, we've heard about painting them and then putting the VIN number in them. Etching. Um, I'm sure you could do that. I hadn't, I hadn't uh, looked into that method. I think that uh, our, our suggestions had sort of hewed more towards um, just being careful where you park. You know, and, and, and thinking about that from a city perspective, because we're so close to New York City, there are blocks that are quieter than other blocks. Yeah. And uh, there are places where there's going to be more foot traffic, even at night. And you could sort of mm, figure out your odds. Okay, <laughs> what, what, what neighbor's car has been broken into this month? You know, <laughs> it's that, that kind of thing. I mean, you can, you can definitely decrease your odds based on where you park. So let's talk for a minute about the the metals that are in there. And you had mentioned the metals, and there's basically three of them that seem to be worthy of stealing mm-hmm. the catalytic converters. I can't imagine trying to uh, scrape them out, extract it. yeah, extract it out of the catalytic converter. But I guess well, somebody I does that. A, I actually found a YouTube video, believe it or not, <laughs> that shows how to do this. It's not something that the average Joe could do. I don't think it's more kind of like. Uh, there's a lot of chemistry involved. I mean, this guy was, uh, he was a chemistry guy. So it was more of a fun experiment for him. But he basically, he took out the crushed up chunks and the dust from the from the converter housing. You throw away the, the scrap, you know, ferrous metal, metals right. aren't worth much. And you, you take all this dust and then they dissolve the chemicals out with various uh, chemical solutions. Uh, you dissolve the precious metals out. So at the end, you're left with uh, different, different powders of different weights that you can separate. So but again, it's kind of like so, pan mining for gold. Oh yeah, very much. Yeah, so. exactly. Do but, you, I mean, if you look at the cost of some of these things, 
you know, uh, platinum, I looked at the price this morning, it was close to $1,000 an ounce. Uh, palladium was, uh, was more than 2000. And then rhodium's all over the place. I mean, it's very rare, but it can be as low as, you know, 8000. Today, it was 16. Okay, so so we we get these extracted. Uh, I'm a chemist, I get them extracted. Now, who am I going to sell that to? There's I mean, the, the rhodium dealer down at the corner. Uh, uh, yeah, a rhodium yeah, R.S. Yeah, he's, he's the behind thing, the chevron. Know? He's behind <laughs> the chevron. Seriously. If you're the, guy, if you're the guy who's cutting them off with a sawzall, you're probably not going to be, like, shaking out the chunks and, you know, doing a chemistry experiment in your garage. You're probably just going to try to unload the things as quickly as possible uh, to a, a plant that deals with that kind of stuff. And there, there have to be regulations in place from state to state that deal with who can buy that who can do what with it so it re again it really comes back to where you live as to how easy or difficult it is to unload so, a, a catalytic converter so would it be somebody like a like like a recycler that takes a catalytic converter opens it up right. does all of the chemistry stuff and and gets out well, a, he, he might not even do all the chemistry stuff no. he may extract the substrate and sell get rid of all the metal and right. sell the substrate to the next guy down the line who crushes it into a dust, who sells it to the next guy down the line. It's probably uh, multiple steps so they can, uh, so they can is, extract it these metals. Sounds like a meth lab. <laughs> it is. <laughs> kind of. yeah. So well. do you find that what percentage would you say of catalytic converters are stolen are sent to the metal extraction side versus are sent to the resale side for replacement because i stole your I, converter and I you got to get it, it really depends on where you live because a metal extraction place probably isn't going to take that stuff in a small quantity for starters okay like even if you're you have a bunch of guys sitting around uh shaking chunks out of catalytic converters all day and you come over it's probably not going to be something along the scale that you would see from uh, a metal recycler who gets like thousands of these things every year and then sends them all in at once to be processed or whatever. Um, and, and then there are going to be regulations. Who can they do business with? You have to have a special license for this in your state. It, it's, it's really going to depend where you live. So it's much more complicated than just a, a guy that goes, the guy that goes out there with the Sawzall is really the dummy in the whole deal. Yeah, and he's, he's looking not to making, make 30 to 50 bucks. Yeah, that's it. And then, then it goes down the line from there. But I think that if you could, if you could stop the guy from stealing the thing to begin with, then maybe we might get a handle on it. Good my, luck. My understanding, my limited understanding of uh, organized crime is that uh, the highest risk jobs uh, usually present the lowest reward. So I'm yeah. sure that, that guy's not kidding. And what money. part of organized crime have you been involved yeah. in in the past? <laughs> I'm Italian. I'm Italian. Hey, 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 hey. He knows a guy. Tony Two yeah. Thumbs. Hey, he right? knows a guy. Tony Two Thumbs. Because <laughs> he's got no other fingers. He's just got two thumbs. <laughs> hey. hey. So we're cutting off this the Sawzall accident. Yeah. yeah right. Well, um, the interesting information. Yeah, you know, once you start drilling down into it and you figure out that we're talking about maybe a quarter of an ounce of this, a half an ounce of that, or a little bit. Two or three grams of this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I just don't see the reward. Hey, I'm in. Wow. I'm going to go pick up, uh, you know, 30 bucks off of this uh, catalytic converter, and I've risked my life and uh, all my friends. And I just I don't get it. I just if don't you, get if it. If you look at the amount of, of uh, rhodium that's in a catalytic converter, it's one to two grams. That's still like five, six, seven hundred bucks worth of precious metal there. You know, even though that's that's grams, it's still worth a lot of money when you when you figure that the uh, the price for an ounce is sixteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, well, Don so, knows what a gram and an ounce yeah. is, but that's a, that's another <laughs> we story. Got a, we got a scale in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've gone to the electronic at least. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> It's not the one with the dial on well, it anymore. But it has become, it, in Texas, and I, I would assume everywhere, it's become extremely dangerous as a vehicle owner to confront them because typically they do it in a two or three guys are coming, one's under the car cutting it off, and the other two are playing lookout. lookout yeah. And they it, in Houston, they're armed. Uh, so there's it's every weekend there's gunfire uh, surrounding catalytic converter thefts in Houston. It's, it's almost scary. 
Stay back. Don't confront them. Call the police. Call the police. They'll be there in 20 minutes. And depending on the vehicle, the vehicle can be totaled out because the cats are removed. Because oh, yeah. sometimes they have more than one. Obviously, they do. Some one, have two, two three, some have three, four. And then the cost of replacing that versus the value of the vehicle can be totaled right. out. The well, vehicle. I have to tell you. Yeah. Uh, so I had a truck to drive here just not too long ago. And I was going to go to a part of town for dinner. And I thought, I'm not taking the truck. Because I don't want to risk having to fill out all the forms yeah. somebody uh, stole on, the a, on a car, a press car that I get. Yeah, because somebody stole the catalytic converter. And you don't know it until you get in after dinner and it fires up and it's open exhaust system. And that'll scare the daylights out yeah, of you. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, use a little forethought. And you, when you get out and you've gone on a Saturday night to dinner, don't park it in some place that you're not familiar with. Well, even places, though, you are familiar with, you know, the uh, the Walmart up there at Spring Cypress in, off of 249, there's catalytic converters stolen there every weekend, and it may be seven, eight, or nine of them are stolen in one fell swoop. It, Like I said, it doesn't take them two minutes to cut your converters off because they jump it under takes seconds. With, the, with the Sawzall and cut it off, and then they throw it in, and off they go to the next one. It's you know, the other thing that I wanted to bring up before we let you go, Benjamin, is the fact that uh, Consumer Reports, yes... Uh, become a member, spend the uh, little mo- amount of money that it takes to become a member of Consumer Reports. Great information. There. But there's also, like your report, I can get your report without having to pay any money. And there are other tips and, and great information on ConsumerReports.org. Yeah, I'd like to mention that we uh, we test everything scientifically. We uh, we buy all of our cars and, and the things that we test. So you can uh, count on us being objective and, you know, so what specifically do you do there? I'm an autos reporter. So I, I cover a lot of things having to do with car sales, used car sales, um, any kind of uh, mechanic stuff. I'm a, I'm a shade tree mechanic myself. So. So, the, so the information you gather goes into one of the reports that folks can look at. Or do you write articles specific to your... I write articles, but I use our, a lot of our data to write these articles because we have so much data from testing that we can actually use that to help consumers make informed choices. Consumerreports.org. Benjamin, great to talk to you. Let's talk again soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You You bet. bet. Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us here at the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show, shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. Time Mm -hmm. now for the racing calendar. I know that uh, you've got... uh, Formula One that Jeff is all anxious to hear about uh, when that's going to... I'm going to step out. I'm going to go to the uh, break room. <laughs> well, uh, NHRA is at New England uh, the weekend of the 3rd through the 5th. They're not. They're off this weekend? Yeah. Amazing. Again. And then uh, they're going to be at Bristol, which is always a great place to race, and that's going to be June 17th through the 19th. NASCAR is in Kansas uh, tomorrow. They're going to be in Texas on the 22nd. Mm-hmm. Charlotte on the 29th, which is the World 600. And uh, Formula One is in um, the Spanish Grand Prix is next weekend. And then the Monaco Grand Prix is, again, the 29th, which is Memorial Weekend. So Memorial Weekend, if you're just a junkie like me, you can watch Monaco F1 early in the morning. You can watch the Indy 500 late morning to early evening. And then you can watch the World 600 in Charlotte in late evening. And yeah. sleep and we, through half of it. Well, <laughs> and there's that. And also uh, get an appointment the next day for your chiropractor because your head's gonna going to be going around. Yeah. Uh, IMSA on uh, June the 3rd, they're going to be racing at Belle Isle in Detroit. Yeah. Uh, Isn't and, it this last year for it? I think I believe so. And then the on, the f- on the 4th, Belle Isle is going to have the Indy cars running. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Gulf Coast Racing Series uh, season starts July 2nd uh, out at uh, Houston Motorsports Park. And they are going to have a Spec Miata race with a five thousand dollar purse for Spec Miatas. I think you can buy some Spec Miatas for five thousand dollars. Couple of them. If you have one, get a hold of Richard Tomlin at Apex Motorworks and get yourself registered for that race. Yep. Time now to look at uh, Jeff's car of the week, and it would be the Myers Manx. Uh, Myers Manx. You know, uh, it was only built for a short period of time, relatively speaking. But I understand that. I don't know what it is now, but yeah, I think that you can still buy them. You can, and it wasn't necessarily under ten grand for this one. Uh, it's summertime, and everybody's out. People going to the beach. You see the Galveston reports and everything. 
So I thought this would be a fun one to do. The Absolutely. My, the Myers Manx uh, is a dune buggy. It's a small recreational oriented automobile initially designed by a uh, California artist, engineer, boat builder, and surfer, Bruce F. Myers. Uh, he produced it in a Fountain Valley, California company called BF Myers and Company from 64 to 71 was the main construction yes. days or the years of that. Uh, it's a kit car. Uh, it's a shortened Volkswagen chassis. The production went from 64 to 65. The prototype where there were 12 built uh, from 65 to 71, there was about 6,000 and about 2,000 present building of them. Now, you can find an old beat up one for a few thousand dollars. You can get a, a professionally done Manx for, you know, mid teens, $15,000, $16,000. Uh, he's an inventor, grew up in California. He was the surfing scene. He drove a 1930 vintage Ford to the beach with a surfboard, uh, did all the surfboard stuff that was cool. back then. Uh, but he also constructed a 42-foot fiberglass catamaran that he did sail. He sailed, sailed around quite a bit of the world. Uh, came back and then uh, started saying, well, dabbling in the hot rods and, and things of that nature and brought back the Manx for that. Uh, Old Red, uh, the previous shots that, that, that we're looking at, Old Red had the I tanks on it. I dated her one time. <laughs> okay. Uh, it was based on a Volkswagen. Kept, kept her shoes. Yeah. <laughs> the pumps. <laughs> Uh, so he wanted to get into uh, Ferdinand's Porsche original design and, and the lightweight vehicle and capable off-road vehicle. Uh, he did take, he, he kind of canvassed and cannibalized some Chevrolet pickups, specifically uh, the, the trailing arms, so that he could put them on the vehicle itself. So it was it was great that he did that. You know, it was a lot of hot rodding back then and a lot of surfing. In fact, that shot you see right there, that's Mike doing the on-road or uh, on acceleration, on ramp acceleration. Yep. So uh, it was announced back in two, in 2020 that he did sell the company. He sold it to Trosdale Ventures, and uh, from there he he went on to uh, pass away in 2021. And how February. old was he? He was 94. I hope to live that long. Now in 2016, he was on Jay Leno's Garage with the original Red. Manx. Well, and a, and a true Myers Manx is extremely collectible today. Yes, it is. You know, his boat building time With is what glass. gave him the skills to build these bodies. Yep. And after he started it, everybody else joined. Can you can you buy a kit? You I just, don't think you can buy a Manx anymore. Not no, but you can buy parts of it. And there's there's probably aftermarket guys out there that will do that. Uh, but an actual original Manx, they are pricey. If you find one. No, I don't want the original. I just assume. Yeah, yeah you can still yeah, buy yeah, dune yeah. buggy bodies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Might not be a Manx, but they all have a similar look. Yeah. yeah. And they all strap on to a Volkswagen. But the Manx was way ahead of its time because all of the other aftermarket Manxes, if you Followed will. him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the same basic body design because it was so simple and so clever. I mean, one mold and it was done. Mm -hmm. And uh, next week, I've got something kind of kind of different. I'm going to do uh, James Dean's car that he the lost Porsche. His, yeah, he lost his life, and I got a story of that for next week. Okay, good. Well, uh, yeah, I, I not to impede on your stuff. I have to tell you that my brother-in-law moved down here from Wisconsin in a 1954 Chevrolet three-quarter ton utility truck. Had the utility boxes on the side. It was all rusted up, and it was just awful. It had a 235 Blue Flame 6 in it. Mm -hmm. That was the vehicle that I was in the process of, never finished it, turning it into a dune buggy. Now, you're going to go, what? <laughs> Let's have a 3,000-pound dune buggy. <laughs> so the utility and that's lightweight. On the Bonneville Salt Flats. <laughs> so the utility box came off first, and then the cab and fenders and all of that. So all I had was uh, a frame and a motor, and wheels, and suspension, okay? And I, my dad worked at Waukesha Motor Company and knew uh, a guy that was handy with a torch. So. Stealing catalytic converters, <laughs> but they didn't have them back then yet. And so the the truck was so long, it had a two-piece drive shaft with a yoke in the middle, yeah. right? So I said, Let's just take the yoke out of the middle of it and take one piece of the drive shaft out oh and shorten boy. it up that much. It was short. Once we got finished with it, it was short. I took the wheels, 
had some new rims put on the wheels, which, I don't know, 16 lug wheels or something. I don't remember oh, what wow. they were. It was a lot. And I had some great big wide rims put on those wheels. And uh, I put some farm implement tires on the back that were massive. They were th- this wide. <laughs> it was a wheel stander. It was a wheel stander. Uh, and wow. uh, it had a four-speed with a granny, granny first, first gear. Mm-hmm. And I put two one-barrel carburetors on that six-cylinder. And wide open throttle and granny, it'd go four miles an hour. It would. But, boy, it'd get there in a hurry. Straight up like this. <laughs> and uh, I had more fun. And what I did is I took the bed, cut the bed in two pieces, so at least I had a floorboard up here and the back of it. Of course, none of it was really long at all just to kind of have something hanging across the top of the frame. I had more fun with that thing, driving it around the block and pulling wheelies, at, that three-quarter race cam, two. Oh, man. I had, uh, I had two uh, Rochester one barrels on a... Uh, Offenhauser. Offenhauser yeah, manifold. That was, that was the manifold uh, of dual choice. Point, dual point uh, distributor, Mallory. Uh, I had it all fixed up. That thing. Whatever was, happened to it? I sold it. I wound up selling it because I never finished it. I got into a radio career and stayed in my parents' garage forever, and I finally said, look. He's one of them. I am one of those. He lived in his parents' garage no, until I he was 53. <laughs> no. no, 63. 63, that's what it was. Hey, the In Wheel Time Car Show streams on iHeartRadio, Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. Podcasts available from your favorite podcast channel. And the In Wheel Time Car Show continues right after this. Father's Day weekend, Saturday, June 18th, 2022. It's the next Tailpipes and Tacos cruise in, and you're invited. Tailpipes and Tacos Father's Day edition will be at the same Loopy Tortilla in Katy, 8 to 11 a.m. on Saturday, June 18th. It's the only place cruisers compete for trophies and other prizes. Enter your vehicle for best hot rod, best classic, and best modern classic. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's coolest cruise in and is your opportunity to see the best hot rods, show cars, classics, and resto mods, and get Loopy Tortilla breakfast tacos and adult beverages. There's no entry fee, and cars will automatically compete for custom Loopy trophies and other prizes. It all happens at the Lippy Tortilla Tex Max in Katy on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I 10. Kick off summer with Tailpipes and Tacos Father's Day Edition, Saturday, June 18th. The In Real Time Car Talk Show will be there too. Celebrate Father's Day, the start of summer, and the return of Tailpipes and Tacos. Saturday morning, June 18th, 8 to 11. We'll see you then, weather permitting. Want to take a minute to tell you about Gulf Coast Auto Shield, a Houston detail company like no other. Gulf Coast Auto Shield offers paint correction services that will give your car, truck, or SUV a like-new shine. Afterwards, you'll want to protect it with a professionally installed nano-ceramic coating or protection film. Worried about your very expensive windshield getting damaged, broken, or cracked? Let Gulf Coast Auto Shield install ExoShield, a windshield protection film. Give John Gray a call today or check out their website, gcautoshield.com. Hey, whether you own a new, ultra-expensive, exotic, or a five-year-old Suburban, Gulf Coast Auto Shield will help keep your investment looking like the day it rolled off the assembly line. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is conveniently located on the South Sam Houston Parkway, just south of I-69, the Southwest Freeway. Meet the staff and check out all of their services online right now at gcautoshield.com. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is now part of the iHeart family. Now you'll have access to 24-7 Car Talk anytime you need a fix. Just download the iHeart Radio app and ask for In Wheel Time Car Talk, and there we are. Be sure to save us in your iHeart library for instant access. No matter where you are, you have the best car talk show right on your PC, laptop, or mobile device and never have to worry about finding us again. Of course, you can always get access to our video and audio streams via InWheelTime.com and your favorite podcast channel, and all of this is free to you. From the iHeartRadio app, you'll not only hear our Saturday morning live show, but the best shows of the past, updated weekly. Never miss a minute of up-to-date new car reviews, pre-owned reviews, Conrad's Car Clinic, informative interviews, automotive news, and the most fun car talk show on the planet. Just download the iHeartRadio app, search for In Real Time Car Talk, save it to your library, and with a tap of the icon, you'll be in touch with your favorite car talk team. In Real Time Car Talk, streaming now on iHeart.com slash Car Talk. <laughs> 